Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss uh, steel crossbeam design or steel crossbeam checks. The steel decking checks have been left out and the note is added at the bottom of the section as to why. But currently we use the steel crossbeams in the walkway details W3, 4, 5, and 7. And there are also crossbeam details C1 through C5. You can find out more information about these specific crossbeam types in the AISC shapes database, which I will link below as well. We're going to do an example with the C4 by 5.4, <coughs> excuse me, channel crossbeam, steel crossbeam, which looks like this to the right. <coughs> the reason I'm doing an example with this particular beam is this is the most commonly used uh, crossbeam currently and uh, it is likely you'll be using this this in the field however there will be some questions and there is more information in the details about different crossbeam types it is important you um, go through this example but keep in mind that uh, this is for this specific type of crossbeam and you can use the same process for a different shaped crossbeam which you may have to use in the future due to availability or affordability now, when we're calculating demand, it should be the same as the previous video for timber. Uh, nothing is changing, uh, or if things are changing, it is just the span uh, or the spacing, but these values uh, should be changed or input in your design tool and will calculate the same, the moment in the same way we calculated our design moment, design shear, or demand moment and demand shear uh, for the timber video. So I won't go into that. Uh, in here because there is nothing different as far as what the demand loading will be. Now we do need to talk about how the material will behave differently because we're using steel versus wood. And for the steel capacity, we're going to use the AISC 360-16 specifications and those are also linked in the text below. Specifically, I'm looking at F6-1 for channel and I-shaped beams. This is a point where you would reflect on if you're using a different beam, uh, you navigate to a different section for that beam to find the capacity equation. Now, the equation in F6-1 to calculate nominal moment uh, is shown below. Fyzy is less than or equal to 1.6 Fysy. And we'll go into what that less than or equal to, less than or equal to means uh, as we go through the example below. Now for the ASD design in the steel manual, we see this general uh, equation you've seen before, RA is less than or equal to RN over um, omega, sorry, in which RA is our demand, um, both wanna check our point and distributed loads, RN is our uh, moment capacity, our nominal capacity, and uh, omega is our factor of safety, taken as 1.67 per uh, the chapter F general requirements. Now the first step is to get the components of our equation, ZY, SY, and FY. FY is 240 megapascals taken from the bridge builder manual, and that's just the yield strength of the steel. SY is 0 0.277 inches cubed from the AIS, AISC shapes database and ZY is 0 0.565 inches cubed from the shapes database for the C4 by 5.4 shape. And remember, unit analysis, you're going to have to convert this to centimeters cubed eventually. Now we'll check FYZY is less than 1.6 FYSY. And we have two options, yes or no. If it is, we'll take FYSY as our nominal moment value. If not, we'll take the larger value as our nominal moment capacity. Next, we wanna get our allowable flexure, which is just going to be uh, the nominal capacity divided by the factor of safety. And we can check our flexure, which will be MA that is less than or equal to MR of the variables we've defined. Now you may be thinking, what about shear? Um, my note here is a quick check shows that we're way over capacity with our shear design. So a in-depth check is not done in this video. 
And you may be thinking as well, what about the other checks? If you have experience with steel design, uh, there's also, other than what we just checked, which is yielding, so the actual yield of the material, there is flange local buckling and lateral torsional buckling. Because of our short span, we're not worried about these two items, a short or unsupported span. So we're not checking that uh, as a critical path item in this lecture, but something yet to come.